Hey, it's Derek Jones, and thanks for joining me on another episode of Rare Paintball Guns. And today we have a gun that I've talked about a few times, which had some real potential but never really panned out, and that is the uh, action marker uh, Didium. Didium? 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 I think it's the Didium. We're going to call it the Didium. If I'm wrong, let me know in the comments. Um, so Action Marker was another paintball company that started in the 90s in the Fort Wayne, Indiana area. And they were known for making very, very high-end um, spiders, basically uh, uh, stacked blowback style markers such as this. This is a Sentinel. And uh, they made a very, very high quality tube stack blowback, basically taking a, uh, you know, a spider, which is based on the F1 Illustrator design and uh, high end market. So it had auto cocker feed. It used auto cocker style detents um, on both sides and they were just really well made. And, uh, but they were also quite expensive. So I didn't have a lot of exposure to them when they first came out. Uh, we'd read about them, you'd see one or two here and there, but at that time, spending that kind of money on a, a, a stacked blowback just was hard to justify. So they were competing in a tough market already. And what they finally decided to do was they would start making autocockers. And so basically they took the autococker design, put the same kind of um, technology that they had put into their spiders, and they made a really good gun. In fact, they were called an illusion. I think the illusion's the pump. I can't remember. But they had a sniper, which was the illusion, and then they had an autococker. Well, this got him in hot water. Um, at the time, Bud Orr was trying to uh, reassert that he was the inventor of the autococking paint gun, which he wasn't. Um, but he was trying to get that through. And so he filed lawsuits, and I think it was Orr. I'm not, you can't quote me on this, but. I believe War Games uh, filed a lawsuit against Action Marker, and it basically a cease and desist that they couldn't continue making uh, autococker and sniper clones. So they thought, well, we got to do something. So they basically took a, uh, a couple of designs uh, and, and came out with the Didium, which is a Fazer, which is a forward air spring operated uh, return paintball gun. So basically, uh, high pressure, you know, you pull the trigger, it opens the solenoid. Solenoid pushes the bolt forward and blows the ball out and spring returns it. And it got a, Fazer's got a bad name, but they're actually really easy to build and they tend to be pretty efficient. So, um, <clears throat> anyway, I heard about these when they first came out, but I had never seen one. And then I think I got this one in 2004. It's off of eBay. But, so they, uh, Action Marker... I'm getting off course here. Let me get back. So Action Marker uh, decided they were going to release this basically Fazer uh, design and try to compete in the tournament world. Uh, they actually have a video on YouTube where they shoot like 2,000 balls without a break. But if you look at the gun, you'll see the one that they did that with. They actually have an LPR on. Uh, it would not be hard to mount an LPR on this gun, and it's probably a smart thing to do. Um... So this one, so Action Marker was in operation from about uh, late 90s to about 2005, I think, before they were completely done. Um, this marker itself, I think, was made in 2004, but I'm not positive. It's hard to find any documentation. Uh, I've been sending messages to people. I can't get a lot of info back on it. So anybody that has information on Action Marker or actually used a didium, in a ditem in the tournament series, please uh, feel free to comment in the comments. Uh, pretty interesting design, and I'll go over a couple things real fast, then I'll break it down and we'll see what it looks like on the inside, because I've never taken it apart. So, as you can see, this has a die barrel. This is not the stock barrel. I believe it came with like a 12 inch uh, .690, just a stock board barrel. Uh, the bodies are the same that came off of their Sentinel line, so that was kind of smart. They could actually produce the same gun, and I mean, they are the same right down to the cuts. Even the Sentinel has uh, eye holes, so I think they planned on just one run of, could be either Sentinels or could be Didiums, and uh, that was kind of their plan. Uh, you have this really weird bulbous grip frame, 
And the idea was for some, some, they were marketing that it helped you shoot faster. And I don't, I don't know how true that is. I've never actually fired this gun. I probably need to spend some time and, uh, and shoot it. So anyway, to, uh, to, this is not the stock barrel. This is a die boom stick. It did come stock with a uh, center flag regulator, which was a really, really good regulator for the day. Um, and I'm not sure... Uh, I don't think they even produce their own reg ever, and if they did, um, these are all I've ever seen on Ditems. Um, and this one's pretty old. I probably just need to break this whole thing down and rebuild it. So let's talk, okay, so had a center flag regulator. Um, this is your, uh, you know, you're going from high pressure air to the bolt, and then this is just a volume chamber on the front. I don't know why they didn't make that an LPR. Uh, there was intimidators and stuff that at that time, we're already running that way. And it is tapped for an LPR. And I think that, like I said, that's probably extremely beneficial. It doesn't have a clamping feed neck. It has O-rings in there. And I think that was their way of making a cheap feed neck that was relatively solid. I, I think that was a mistake. This really should have been a clamping feed neck. Um, the bolt, which has been in here a long time, is just a traditional Delron bolt. And it does have double detent cuts, so I'm assuming it's got double ego style detents on the inside. I won't know until I take it apart. I've, I've never taken it apart. So there's the bolt. Um, other than that, the Fazer design was really strong. There was, uh, there was a couple guns, the Legends of Fazer, and some of the Diablos were Fazers. The, uh, I can't think of the name of them anymore. They kind of died out because they operate on high pressure and... There's a lot of people who are always talking about the kick, and I always just kind of thought they were pussies. But um, so, like I said, not much to talk about. Action Marker, they were around for a few years. They got sued and they were out of business. And it's too bad because I think they were on to something and they made pretty high quality guns that I really would have liked to have shot one of these when they first came out. Um, I'll probably do a shooting video. Uh, my plan on this is to return it to working order and then uh, play with it. So, But for now, let's just move the camera here and I'll take it apart and see what it looks like. Never take one of these apart, so you're learning as much as I am. One interesting thing is the battery in this gun has been in it since I got it off of eBay in 2004 and it's still good, which kind of unheard of in paint guns. So I'm guessing there's some voltage um, uh, uh, shutoffs in the board that actually prevent that from going bad. So let's take the regulator off. Now, like I said, we were sponsored by Center Flag for a while, and I absolutely loved their uh, their grips and their regulators. They were really well made, and they always worked very well. So I really can't complain. I'm not going to take the reg apart. Um, I probably should, but I'm not going to today. And that operated from 90 to 250 PSI. So already we are lower PSI than I actually thought these operated at. I thought they were more like 450. All right, so the bolt comes out. And then we've got this grip frame, which is kind of funky. I've never really seen this kind of grip frame before. So let's just undo it and see what it does. I want to be careful because I don't want to break anything. These, it does have eyes, and uh, these older guns, the eyes are not always the best design. In fact, a lot of times they're extremely fragile, and just pulling wrong, you can jerk the wires right out. And I don't feel like soldering anything back together today. So let's just take these covers off. One little screw. And there's the cover, and then we have ball detent, traditional cocker detent. So it's got beam brake eyes, which at the time was probably pretty novel. And that detent is jammed and probably needs to be cleaned and rebuilt definitely still good just uh, a lot of old sticky paint in it 
Okay, so we have an eye wire that's filthy. These were supposed to be really good at not breaking paint, um, but it looks like this one broke plenty of paint. So let's keep pulling, pull this grip off and see what we got here. Grip screw. So the barb comes off and that hose is extremely old. Yeah. I bought this used in 2004 and it's pretty much sat in a box. So don't let, uh, that's the barb. I have to pull that off and redo it. Probably gonna need all new hose anyway. Probably some room for some improvement on this design. Um, it's looking very much like uh, pretty much every other Fazer I've ever seen. And But uh, who came first, I can't really tell you. Uh, there was a company called Dragon that was making Fazers. Diablo was making Fazers. Infinity was making Fazers. And you know what? A lot of them really performed well. Um, it was an interesting concept and... Uh, produced a uh, pretty easy so there's the grips now that battery has been in there for a long time uh, it looks like a very similar to an intimidator board and I don't know much about the board I don't know who made them uh, it's got an AT mega chip in there and I know you can program with these two buttons but I don't know how so take that out and then in here, we've got a solenoid. Pull that off. And they have literally used every wrench known to man on this gun. Okay, so there's the eye. And you have your solenoid in there, which looks like, can't really tell you without taking it off. Anyway, there's the solenoid, there's the board. Now. You got beam brake guys, and then you have a traditional trigger, and it's kind of, it's got a micro switch, and it's a it's an okay trigger. It's it's all right. So, so there's that. All right, now if we look at the body itself, this is the ram back here. Nope, oh, just like that. That's just a cover, okay. And that appears to be a QEV. And that's exactly what it is. So basically as the ram is returned to where it's supposed to, so air is gonna go through, blow this forward, and then the spring returns it, which allows the QEB allows the air to jet out that way. So that's supposed to make it uh, more efficient and more, I wonder how that comes out. I wonder if that's. And this is just threaded in, which would make sense because these were already threaded in the back for their velocity lug. So there is the ram. Not especially complex. It's got a spring in there. I'm not gonna take the ram apart. It looks pretty, pretty standard. So you've got a, a spring in there and here's your ram. So when the air goes through here, it pushes this forward, which hits the valve on the inside of the gun, which is a standard cocker style valve. And like I said, a fazer is about as simple as it gets for building a paint gun. And they did a pretty good job of actually taking what they had and turning it into something that could uh, be used. So that's like a spider a spring. And there is their EVA. So right there we have a goes out here. All right, so right there we have a field stripped item. Not super complex, not super difficult at all. Um, it's been sitting for years, and it it doesn't look like it had much use. I mean, 
it's pretty clean and uh, so I'm hopeful to to get this one running and return it to use now this doesn't have a clamping feed neck it's got a pinned so the LPR or the uh, the valve is pinned which means we probably could just pop it out from there is the valve it uh, looks very very uh, spider-ish so they were using whatever they already had and I would bet this is exactly the same valve as we have in here I'll be doing this video shortly um, the valve is in really good shape it looks almost brand new and, uh, doesn't look like this gun got a lot of use I'll be honest interestingly enough almost every screw in here is a different size from everything else so um, not the easiest gun to assemble or disassemble, but it's not terribly bad. All right, let's take that off. All right, let's take this off. And there is your ASA and your valve. Body is extremely simple, basically threaded and uh, a spider valve with a pin valve. And then, uh, so it, it is similar. It's kind of a mix between uh, Timmy, Spider, and Autococker is what it looks like. The bodies are just excellent. You can see they have all these great, and this is milled from a single billet. Only markings on the gun besides the diadem and on the board is this serial number here, which says 2728. So if that's true, this one has 2798. I'm guessing all the bodies were made in one run and then back and forth between whatever they wanted to build don't think there was 2,788 or 28 items ever made. All right, so let's put this back together and we'll uh, talk about it a little more. Got that unstuck. Double detents back in this time um, wasn't that common, so that's kind of cool to see it on this marker. And then we've got our RAM with our QEV. Very, very cool design. There is making sure that that lug lines up with the actual plate on the uh, RAM and most of the problems I ever saw with Fazers were guys who didn't get that lined up quite correctly. Um, this one doesn't seem very hard. Okay, so there's that. Okay. I'm gonna pull this old macro line off of here so I can reattach this. And I don't wanna break it. So I might, I might have to cut this. These would have absolutely been considered uh, state-of-the-art eyes at this time. <clears throat> Back in the early 2000s, this would have been considered state-of-the-art. State. This was. This. This would have been considered. Uh, high-end eye technology. Beam break was not that common and it was really the uh, the best way to go in that, at that time for eyes. So they did a great job on the eyes um, as far as concept. I don't know how they worked in reality. I know that the board basically had eyes on or eyes off and there was no way to really shut them off in the middle of a game, but uh, technology at the time was still Still behind. Um, okay, let's put this back on. And I am not going to put the battery back in there. Should have taken it out a long time ago. I'm really lucky that it hasn't corroded and ruined this board. So let's just leave it out. And that battery is still pretty good. Ten years later, I, I mean, it's either a great energizer battery, or they had some. Uh, 
some technology in that board that prevented those from uh, basically uh, pulling voltage when they're off. And I, I'm guessing that's what it is. I'm guessing they actually put uh, some circuit breakers in there that shut off the battery when the gun's not in use. Um, uses APP Grips. That's a company, Allen Paintball Products, that I haven't heard for a long time that was extremely popular in the 90s. All right, so I've got that all reassembled except for this hose, which I'm going to have to get a lighter. It's so old that I can't pull it off with pliers. So pretty interesting design, like I said. Uh, very straightforward, very easy to assemble, take apart. Love the tray and the brake beam eyes. The dual detents, I think that's a nice feature. Overall, it's a pretty simple gun, and I don't think it's going to take much to make this a shooter. So I will do a shooting video in the future, and then I'll link it to the page. Um, uh, like I said, this is not stock barrel, but uh, I'll hopefully show up on the field with this here pretty soon and, and let it fly. Um, it's kind of sad that action markers didn't make it. Uh, the machining on this gun is just beautiful, and you can see that uh, it's engraved and... It's pretty, pretty nice. It's got a laser action marker. So if you know about the, uh, the Didium, 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 um, if you know about the Didium, please uh, let me know in the comments, uh, whatever. If you have any insight on action markers, what they went through or who they were and whatnot, because I do have other action markers that I'm going to do reviews on. Other than that, I really appreciate you watching. Uh, please feel free to give us a like and subscribe. And we'll see you next time. Thank you.